Hi boys and girls, welcome back to our Sunday service. How have you been doing? Are you keeping safe? Let us pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us throughout the whole week. You have guided us and protected us, dear Heavenly Father. We bless you and we honor you, Almighty Jehovah. As you start this service, may you be with us, protect us, and may, dear Heavenly Father, may you give us the knowledge to understand your word. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us join the praise and worship team. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Meet our fang, our booby, our two, our booby, our two. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. 
the everlasting Father, I come before you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life and thank you for the gift of salvation. Jehovah Master, I pray that you'll be with us, guide us and protect us, protect our families. And Jehovah Master, grant us all the desires of our hearts and needs and wants. Jehovah Master, we also pray for this nation that you may guide us even during this difficult time of the COVID-19 and you'll heal us from this disease. Jehovah Master, we pray that you'll stretch your healing hand and Jehovah Master, you'll heal us in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray that you bless this church, Jehovah Master, and help us to lead people to your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, worship team. And thank you, Malkia, for praying for us this morning. Boys and girls, welcome once again to Sunday School. I'm sure you're very ready for today's class. And with you once again, is Teacher Carol from Sitam Karen. Welcome somebody who's watching with you, watching near you. You can also wave to your friends whom you can see. Now I'm sure we've been having a good time revising all the miracles that we have learned, the miracles that Jesus did. Have you been counting them? Try and do it in the course of this week. And do you know what? After last week's lesson, some of you did the work and sent it to your teachers. Let us have a look at some of it. Wonderful work, boys and girls. Keep it up. I'm sure our homes are now beautiful with all this work. Now, as we move on to today's story, we have two children, Daisy and Daniel, who have decided that for this time that they are home, they are going to improve on their spelling. So they decide that every day they'll be spelling 10 to 20 words. And at the beginning, oh, it was so easy because the words were also simple. You know, cat and dog and me. But as time went on, the words became longer, more difficult to remember, and even more difficult to write. And they just wondered, now what do we do? This thing is becoming too difficult. 
Guess what happened? Mary, their elder sister, comes and tells them a secret. She tells them that if you want to remember how to spell those words, the secret is read more books. Then that way, when the word is read out, you'll be able to remember it, even without seeing it then. Can you see how something that looked so hard was made doable because somebody else came to help them? And that leads us to our story today, our miracle today. And it is entitled, Jesus has the power to do the impossible. Our Bible reading comes from the book of John. We all have our Bibles, the very last chapter in the book of John, chapter 21, and it comes from verse 1 to 14. You know, on this particular evening, some disciples are just sitting around near the Sea of Galilee. Do we still remember the names of the disciples of Jesus? You could tell someone seated next to you or write it down. Yes, we have John. Nathaniel is correct. Oh, Peter is always there. You're doing well. Please make sure you complete that list. So this is after the resurrection of Jesus and Simon Peter looks at his friends, six of them, and tells them, you know what? I'm going fishing. And the other six tell him, where? You're going fishing. We are going with you. We are not remaining behind. So these seven men head off into the sea. They get a boat, they dress appropriately, get into the boat and begin rowing out. Remember, they were not learning to fish today. These were people who knew how to fish. So they go into the right part of the sea. And when they get there, they look and say, hmm, here there must be lots of fish. We've always caught lots of fish right here. So what do they do? They are fishing using nets. They prepare the net, cast it out, and wait. They wait a little more and keep waiting a little more. And then at some point, they feel like something is tugging at the net. And of course, what do they do? They pull it in. Oh, and the net is empty. If it had something, it wasn't fish. So they do it again. But you know, quietly they are wondering, what could it be? They prepare the net. Could we do it with them, boys and girls? Let's all get our nets ready and we want to cast it out into the deepest part of the sea. So, nets ready. Let's all cast it out. And then we wait for some fish to get in. So we want to see exactly what happened in this story. Let's watch the clip together. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the one from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge. 
but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing! Throw your net out on the right side of the boat, and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred yards away. When they stepped ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, 153 in all. Even though there were so many, still the net did not tear. Come and eat. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This, then, was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from death. Boys and girls, for how long did the disciples try to catch fish on that day? For how long were they out at sea? How do you think they felt by the time it was now getting to morning, you know, we learned that they tried fishing the whole night. Can you imagine doing the same thing over and over and over again for the whole night? These people must have been tired, definitely cold, and I imagine they were hungry. Now, when Jesus appears on the scene, what does he tell them to do? And do they do it? Ha! Huh. Now, imagine how they felt after they obeyed Jesus. So, what do we learn from this story for ourselves? You know, first of all, we want to know whom does Jesus come to help? Our Bible tells us that Jesus came to help his disciples. The disciples were his friends. So Jesus comes to help his friends. When does Jesus come to help us? For the disciples, it was when they were out at sea. That's when they needed a miracle. But you see, for you and I, we are in different places. Some of us are at home, and that's where we need the miracle. Some of us are in hospital. We need the miracle in hospital. Some of us could even be lost. We are not even sure where we are. And that's where we need the miracle. So Jesus comes just where you are, just where I am, and that's where he brings the miracle. How does Jesus perform the miracle? How does he help us? You know what, boys and girls? We all need different miracles, and the Lord knows that. So because he is the one in control of everything, he knows how to help you and he knows how to help me. And it is at this point 
that we will move on and pray. First of all, we are going to pray for those who would want to be amongst the friends of Jesus, whom he comes to help, even after a long night, after a long wait. So if you're one of them, please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you because you are the one who comes to help us. Today, Lord, I want to be your friend. I want to be one of those whom you come to help when I am in need. So I pray, Lord Jesus, that from this moment on, you would help me and make me be one of yours. And it is in your name that I pray. Amen. I'd also like to pray with another group of people. You're already friends of Jesus. You're already his disciple. But there is something that has been so difficult in your life, something that has been so hard at home, and you're getting tired. You're getting discouraged. And you're wondering if anything will ever change. Jesus is here to help each one of us. We will not give up. He will turn up and turn that situation around. He will change things. So let's pray together if you're in such a situation. Lord Jesus, you know my situation. And I ask you this morning, Lord, to come in and help me. Help my family. Help my friends so that things may improve. And just like you performed a miracle for your disciples in the sea, please perform a miracle for us too. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. And we all say, Amen. And things will change. And with that, we move to our memory verse for today. And our memory verse comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 121, verse 2. Let's say it together. Psalm, chapter 121, verse 2. And this is what it says. My help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Together, my help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That is the source of our help. Psalm 121 verse 2. Please let's memorize it. Hide the word of God in the heart. So, we are now going to have some craft to do. And because we are excited at the things God does, we have two today. Now, in the first one, we have been fishing with the disciples. So, we are going to come up and make fish. We are fishing. Begin with a piece of paper. Any piece of paper, just make sure it's a square. All sides equal. Once you have your square, fold it once and have a triangle. When you have your triangle, we are going to cut some parts here and it's simple. Just cut, hold your paper this way 
and just cut all the way to the top. You see, I'm not reaching where my fingers are, so I'm not cutting my fingers. Please take care. So just keep cutting. So once you've done that, open up your piece of paper. You will have something that looks like this. Get some glue, use it carefully, no wastage, and put that glue in the middle part. You remember where this line was? You can put it on the outside or inside, but put it only once in the middle part. So there I am. I have put my glue on the line. Just that. It's enough. So I make sure I pick one from the left, one from the right, and I go all the way to the top. I just keep putting them there into the middle. On one end of what you have, you'll have a tail. On the top part, I'll snip there just a bit and fold. That gives me a mouth. But on the other side, I have a tail and then I put an eye. Let me show you one that's done. You'll end up with something like this. You see the parts that I cut are all folded inside. This is the part I cut in. I got my mouth. I drew the eye and I have my tail there. Once it's dry, write today's memory verse. Make your fish as beautiful as you would like it to be. You can make a swordfish, goldfish, it's up to you. So, on the second craft, the second activity that we have is a word search. The title of the search is the great catch of fish. At the bottom of the search, you're going to find 15 words. Look for those words. They are all there. And once you find the 15 words, in the puzzle, what will be left? The words that you didn't touch have a secret message in them. So find the 15 words first. Once you've done it, look for the words that you didn't touch, the ones you didn't circle or cross out. There is a message there. Find the message and write it down here. I'm really looking forward to see how many people will get that message. So with that, boys and girls, we have come to the end of today's class. I believe you enjoyed it as much as I can. Share the word of God with your friends. And remember, my help, your help, will come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God bless you so much and have a lovely week. Bye. Let me tell you, oh my friend, about this joy I'm living in. Let me take the mic, go on a
Awesome and 